Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes, that helped me. All right. Our first order of business is a roll call of commissioners. I'll give that to Angela. Commissioner Branson. Commissioner Journey is actually out. Commissioner Parker. Here. Commissioner Waltheus. Commissioner Melcher and Commissioner Wood want to log on, but they are having difficulty. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll be able to join this process. She said that's all she gets. Um, is she is she clicking on the link for the first Thursday? Sure, you can start turning on. Pardon me one minute, Chairman. We're we'll going to try to get her connected here real quick. Just did one right off of her. So, right. Okay. Um, we can go through the main. Well, Blair and I are going to keep trying to get her connected, but. All right, that sounds good. So we'll move on to our first order of business, which is uh, approval of the meeting minutes from March 16th, 2023. Anybody have any corrections or minutes in regards to the meeting minutes? How will that work, Angela? If Henry was absent, the other two aren't fine, and do we have enough to approve the meeting minutes, or should we continue those on to the next meeting? Um, I'm thinking because we wouldn't have a quorum. I don't could be honest, don't know. <laughs> exactly. I, mean, I don't know either. Uh, we can maybe we minutes. We can hold off. Yeah, we can. Right. So uh, possibly readdressing the meeting minutes later in this current meeting if we get two more commissioners online to join us. So, all right. Move on to our go ahead for our new business of application LA twenty three oh two. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Not sure what's going on. So we are coming to the planning commissioner. So you um, we went through the process of doing the code revisions that were adopted in October. And um, we are now finally coming back with some revisions, um, some corrections. And one of the requirements are we need um, Mission or council approval to act to sign the application to get it submitted. So some of the things that you are going to see on the application, um, we I have a copy of your application in there. The one we will be submitting for the um, it doesn't list all of the sections yet. You will see that actually at the planning commission hearing when we do the public hearing. But just to um, give you a little bit of a summary of some of what is in there. Um, we have some general clarifications and error corrections, such as numbering errors, code that was missing, code references, et cetera. Um, we accidentally took out duplexes and multifamily um, from the C1 and C2 zone. It was in the previous code, and we've noticed 
because it came up. I noticed we accidentally uh, took that out. Um, we are updating open storage um, criteria so that it complies with the code compliance criteria. So they actually work together um, and make sure that they match. Um, in the residential criteria in the RC zone, uh, we want to make sure that the RC zone has a mix of different things that could be done, you know, like residential, commercial. Um, we, I went through and made sure the criteria in the RC zone matched what we had in the zones in the R1, R2, and R3. Um, they, it still referenced the old code criteria and didn't reference the new code criteria. So I wanted to make sure that they matched and everything, um, we also now have a Senate Bill 458 requirements um, allowing divisions for middle housing. Um, so what that entails is you have a lot um, with a duplex and the parent lot with the duplex is all has the right setbacks, has garages and uh, whatnot, and they can actually divide that and sell them separately. Um, there will be some extra criteria that goes along with it, but that is now allowed in a Senate Bill. It goes along with the um, House Bill 2001 that was um, enacted for the uh, when we went over 10,000 and we had to allow duplexes. So this kind of piggybacks off that and we're working through that criteria. So that'll be a big chunk that you'll see. That's a big chunk that we had to add and will come into play here soon. Um, we also um, are adding an adult oriented use. Um, it will be allowed as a conditional use in the industrial zone. Um, an adult oriented use shall not be established or expanded within 100 or within 500 feet of any residential zone or use. An adult and oriented use shall not be established or expanded within 500 feet of a property line of a church, school, or public park. So that is a new section um, that we will be adding. Um, and then just some one um, error. We have non remonstrance agreement in a couple different places and it needs to be development agreement. We don't have non remonstrance agreements anymore. Um, so those are just some of the general. Um, there's a lot of changes um, in there, but most of them are pretty minor. We just have a the biggest one will be the Senate Bill 458. So, so mostly clerical. Yeah, so the code does. Welcome, Jamie and Laura. Hi. The, the code does specify that. Um, that legislative amendments need to be initiated by either the Planning Commission or the City Council. And so we are just asking for a consensus of the Planning Commission, whether we can move ahead with this application. It doesn't mean that you've approved all of the of the changes. It just means that the application will be submitted and we'll put out the notice to DLCD as a potential change. And then there will be the actual text of the of the changes will come before you and there will be a public hearing over it, followed by a public hearing in front of the city council. So are we recommending that the process begin? So that, that's what we're asking you to do. Okay. So it's up to you, but we would appreciate that. Commissioner Wood and Commissioner Melcher, did you hear that exchange? Yes, I heard the uh, just the end of it that you were hoping that we would um, recommend the the plan. Right. So, so um, just to to recap, there's a number of changes, uh, amendments to the development code that uh, are needed and have been asked for, um, and in order to get that process started. We need the either the city council or the planning commission to initiate that application. And so um, a vote of the commission directing staff to begin that process um, would satisfy, would, would, would take care of it, and then it would be brought before you um, with the full text and the, uh, the public hearing for a, a vote for your recommendation to the city council. OK, thank you. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I have a second. All the oh, I'll have to do a roll call vote since we are not all in the same room. Okay. Commissioner Wood. Aye. Commissioner Melcher. Yes. Commissioner Waltheus. Commissioner Parker. Yes. Commissioner Branson. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. Okay. Have a quorum six. Yes. Uh, 
one absent. Okay. So we'll take a slight step back in our um, little housekeeping duties here and we'll go back to the March 16th uh, Planning Commission meeting minutes. If anybody has any corrections, addendums that they would like to see in that or accept them as they are written. Made a motion from somebody that was there. Yes, as Henry was absent. Miss Nancy hadn't joined us yet. I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay, we have a motion to approve the meeting minutes as they are written. We have a second. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. So that we'll hop over to you when you're ready for the roll call vote. Okay, Commissioner White? Yes. Oh, I forgot you. She wasn't here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll get there. Commissioner Branson. Commissioner Parker. Yes. Commissioner Wolthius. Yes. Commissioner Wood. Uh, yes. And Commissioner Melcher. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. So in regard to the public hearings, if we could go maybe slightly out of order and put the housing needs analysis in. Staff have any? No. Okay. We'll go with that. So we're going to go ahead and open the public hearing for ZMA 2301 at 644. The applicant is proposing to change the zoning map in an area consisting of approximately 190,211 square feet located in Sweet Home. Um, tax map 13 S 01 E 32 AA tax lot 600. The Sweet Home zoning map is proposed to change from the residential low density R1 zone to the residential high density R3 zone. The proposed change would bring the zoning designation into conformity with the property's existing comprehensive plan map designation. The Planning Commission will hold a public hearing to make the recommendation to the City Council. City Council will hold the public hearing to decide on this application. So, the applicable, uh, sorry, the applicable substantive criteria are listed in the staff report. Testimony, arguments, and evidence must be directed toward the criteria described or other criteria in the plan or land use regulation, which the person believes to apply to the decision. Failure to raise an issue accompanied by the statements or evidence sufficient to afford the decision makers and the property an opportunity to respond to the issue precludes the appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals based on that issue. So with that being read in, do any of our commissioners, ha commissioners have any personal bias in regards to this application? No. 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 I have none. Any conflicts of interest? No. No. None. Any ex parte information? No. 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 Right, fine. Okay. So at that point, we will go to Angela for our staff report. Thank you, commissioners. Um, the subject track contains approximately 190,211 square feet. It is currently zoned at the residential low density, and the comprehensive plan designation is residential high density. Um, as stated, the um, applicant is requesting to change the zoning to residential high density, bringing it into conformity with the property's existing comprehensive plan. Um, based on the review of the FEMA firm maps, um, the subject property is not in the 100-year floodplain. It does not show wetlands or waterways on the property. Um, the subject has frontage along Clark Mill Road, and it has access to city and water sewer services from Clark Mill Road. Um, staff finds that the, uh, sorry, I lost my place here. <laughs> the subject property has the comprehensive plan designation as residential high density. Um, the proposed zone change would bring the zoning into conformity with the property's existing comprehensive plan map designation and is consistent with the description and policies of the R3 zone. Um, the staff uses uses permitted in the use is permitted in Sweet Home Municipal Code 1714-020, 1714-030, 1714-040 and 1714-040 can be accommodated on the subject property without exceeding its physical capacity. The subject property is approximately 190,000. 
211 square feet, the R3 zone density requirements for single family attached, detached homes and duplexes are no more than one residential structure per lot or parcel other than an approved accessory dwelling unit, maximum of 12 dwelling units per net acre, and the R3 zone density requirements for multifamily is a maximum of 28 units per net acre. Um, based on the information, uh, we find that the applicant um, complies. <clears throat> All development in the R3 zone shall comply with the applicable provisions of the development code and the following references, additional development requirements um, in Suite Home Municipal Code 1714-070. Off-street parking, all single-family homes and duplexes shall require a garage or carport. In addition, provide two hard surface parking spaces. Other uses identified in the zone shall comply with the provisions of Chapter 17.44. Signs shall conform to the standards contained in Chapter 17.50. Fences shall conform to the provisions contained in Chapter 17.52. Landscaping improvements shall conform to provisions contained in Chapter 17.54. Yards and lots shall conform with provisions contained in Chapter 17.56. And a property owner is advised other regulations may apply for property in an identified natural resource uh, flood hazard area or in or near an identified historic site. Um, per the CED engineering comments in section two, there's a 12 inch water main on the west side of Clark Mill Road. Cost of connection for sewer services will be assigned during the development application review. There's a 15 inch sewer main in the center of Clark Mill Road. Cost connections for the city services will be assigned during the development application review. Adequate public facility services and transportation transportation networks are planned to be provided concurrently with the development of the property. No development has been proposed with this application. <laughs> the propose the purpose of the R3 zone is to provide areas suitable and desirable for high density residential development and particularly for apartments, but where other types of residential and related public service uses are appropriate. The R3 zone is the most appropriate in areas which have been developed for high density residential use or which are suitable for such use due to proximity to downtown sweet home and to highway related commercial areas inside the city. Um, no development has been proposed with this application. Based on the findings listed in section three of the report, staff recommends that the planning commission recommend that the city council approve this application. Since the request is for a zone change, staff has not recommended any conditions of approval. In acting on a zone change application, the planning commission will hold a public hearing at which it may either recommend that the city council approve or deny the application. The recommendation should be based on the applicable review and de decision criteria. The city council will hold a public hearing and decide on this application. Motion after opening the public hearing and receiving testimony, the planning commission's options include the following. Move to recommend the city council approve application ZMA 23-01, which includes adopting the findings of fact listed in the staff report. Move to recommend that the City Council deny application ZMA 23-01, and you will need to specify your reasons. Three, move to continue the public hearing to a date and time certain, or four, other. Any questions of staff? Any of our commissioners have any questions for this, for our staff? Microphone, please. Application. Microphone. For one time, I need it. <laughs> Do any of our commissioners have any questions for staff in regards to this application? No, none. Commissioner Waltheus, can you turn on your microphone? Thank you. There you go. No. <laughs> All right, this time I'd like to uh, invite our applicant to come forward if they're here tonight. And if you, oh. We'll get your mic turned on too. If you could, after having to see, if you could state your name and address for the record. Uh, Mark Lund, 39627 Mount Hope Drive, Lebanon. Okay, and if you could just briefly restate for the record the uh, purpose of your application. Um, I'm going to be doing real as well as uh, apartment buildings uh, with a large fitness center. There were as many hats. I want to put you yeah. I too. <laughs> you don't need to get too close to the mic. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank, first of all, thank you for coming down. We do have a lot of applicants that don't actually show up. So it is nice when people do. Um, does anybody on the commission have any questions for our applicant in regards to his application? 
I do not. It right? looks to me like it is just a matter of complying with our comprehensive plan. I do not see any problems for this stage of the progress. Uh, I'd be willing to move ahead when others have spoken. Okay. Yeah. I didn't sorry. hear what you said your plans were for the, the property. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, uh, apartment, uh, apartment buildings with a large fitness center, like a Sam Fit style, pretty large. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. We will have plenty of opportunity to deal with this at a later meeting, correct? Yes. No. Well, no. It, it, no if, this if, part is our zoning map amendment. Yeah, the rest of it would be yeah. strictly. I was talking clerical. about the apartments and the fitness center. We we are strictly yeah. zoning right now. Correct. Right, but <clears throat> just to clarify, in the high density zone, uh, apartment buildings are an outright permitted yes. use. Uh, according to the the parameters that are in the development code, so there's no conditional use or anything um, that would come before you. It wouldn't be it right. if it was a subdivision. Do anybody else have any? Do anybody? Lovely English. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions for our applicant? Keep your hand back here. He'll have a chance oh. in just a sec. All right, so thank you so much. Sir. Um, uh, proponent testimony at this time, those wishing to speak in favor of the application, this would be the time to do so. Proponent testimony, those wishing to speak in opposition of this application. And if you could just uh, state your name and address for the record, that would be fantastic. My name is Mark Scott. 127 oh, 1207 Park Mill Road, which is literally next door to that. So I actually have several concerns about this being developed. I have no problem with single family dwellings. When we bought our house, which is next to that property, we were told that that's what it was zoned for and that it would not be apartment buildings. We were told the zoning was going to be simply that. We were fine with that. You have several people that have wells in that area. You know, we address what that's going to do to any of the wells that most of us are reside, uh, residing with. Um, you have virtually no sidewalks down that street, and yet you're sitting in the middle of a school zone. You already have a traffic issue that's going on on Clark Mill right now. I mean, literally this morning, I sat for 15 minutes just trying to get on my driveway. I don't know what you're going to do when you start putting in, you know, 75 to 100 apartments. And you have that parking condition unless the city's planning to put traffic lights on both Long Street and on Highway 20. You're going to have a major traffic backup right there. Um, you know, these are these are some of the things. I mean, I'm sitting there knowing that if you guys have an apartment building put up there, I'm going to be sitting for the rest of my life with the lights shining in the back of my yard. I'm not sure any of you guys would be overly excited to find out that you have an apartment building put over your backyard. Um, the last but not least is what's that going to do to all of the property values that we have in that area, having a, an apartment building put right literally in our backyard. I mean, there's several properties throughout Sweet Home that are perfect for putting apartment buildings, but I don't think that we're, you guys are looking at having that right now as an appropriate area because of the concerns. Again, just looking at how much traffic you currently have on Clark Mill Road. What happens when you have all these apartments? Houses is one thing. Apartments is a whole different problem. These are the concerns that I have. And I would ask that you guys consider keeping this more of a single family dwelling, which it was originally designed to uh, was originally zoned to be, and not allow an apartment building to step in a residential center. That's my concerns. Okay. Um, I, they are all valid concerns, and I do appreciate you again coming down and making your opinion known. Um, our main focus tonight is the zone change, which you did address. Comprehensive plan map that we have set for the future and the growth of Sweet Home does show this becoming at some point an R3, so a high density area based on its proximity to the highway. Um, right. Your traffic 
analysis is very good, although the Highway 20 light would be an ODOT issue out of our hands. I'm just saying. Oh, no, I, I appreciate we, it. We have a major traffic problem yes. on that road as it is. Agreed. Yeah. So, uh, if, I'm, if I may, it's outside Commissioner. It's cities. Yeah. And uh, so we are also about to start our transportation system plan update. Yes. And um, that's a process that's a public process, and all members of the public are invited to participate in that. Um, this would definitely be one of one of the intersections, Clark Mill and Highway 20 is one of the intersections that would be talked about as part of that update. Typically, signalizing and interchange um, is dependent on development. And so as the need arises, then that's when things kick in. And what's one of the reasons why the city charges system development charges for uh, for new homes and new, especially new apartment complexes is that some of that funding would go toward improvements um, such as signalizations. Now, um, on the sidewalk issue, one thing to note that if there is a high density housing development put in, it would be considered a commercial building permit. And as such, it would have sidewalks and street improvements that would be required as a part of it. So any any construction would also be improving the street to, to address that. If you look at your plot map right now, mm -hmm. if they put a sidewalk down the front road which is going to be where their plot map is you still have the whole stretch in front of my place plus all the buildings past that and that's something we've talked about uh, among city staff is that if if a development went through here and improved the sidewalk along the property line of the development we would also be looking at a um, a coordinated effort by the city um, and whatever uh, development agreements we have on file with neighboring property owners to extend the sidewalk to connect to Highway 20 and to Long Street. Because once, if you have something like this in the middle, uh, get the bulk of it done, then it's it's basically just a sidewalk in front of the two houses to the north to connect to the sidewalk near where Hoy's is, and then the two houses to the south to connect over to Long Street. Yeah, on my property, you'd have to put a culvert all the way down that. Are you to the south? Or are you to the south of the north? I am to. Are you between uh, this property and Hoy's, or are you closer no, to Long Street? Between this property and Long Street. Okay. On top of that, you mentioned that there was no wetlands, but if you look on the back end of that, that is nothing but wetlands. And I know that because I called the city planning about that originally. So I was informed that that was all wetlands. I'd have to take a look at the city's uh, wetland. Uh, map. Well, if, a creek that goes right down. Sure, there, yeah. but that's that's also a building permit item that there are rules surrounding wetlands and how far back you can be from them and what uh, what mitigation standards, what mitigation would be necessary. In fact, there's a some other development along Long Street that is, uh, is severely impacted by wetlands, and so the the developer has changed the way the, that property is being developed. This would be no different. That any issues like that would be handled through that construction process. Now, the, the final point I wanted to make is you, you brought up the um, light shining into your backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have rules uh, and a lighting plan would be required and no light trespass would be permitted. That, that is, any lights that are on this uh, that are on the property would have to be directed on the property itself and not to spill over to any neighboring property. Now, uh, there my understanding is that any development here would connect to city water. Uh, I don't know of any plans to construct a well. You put a massive parking lot in the middle of that property that has water runoff. So any water runoff um, would have to be managed on the site. And um, typically those that runoff is directed toward the street, the ditch. So the, the ditch that's along Clark Mill as part of the street improvements, that ditch would be made into a, a um, storm drain pipe going through. And and all the all the stormwater would be directed toward that. There probably would be some detention on site, um, but uh, I don't that, that that's the yeah. way property is developed. Yes, I understand that as a general contractor from the years. The point that I'm saying is, you put a giant parking lot. Any of the water that would normally go through that surface into the groundwater is no longer going to be there. It's going to be diverted. Mm. Oh, so you're that's talking exactly. about the amount of groundwater supply? Yeah. So anybody with a well is going yeah. to end up dry. That's something that I really don't have the expertise to comment on. So these are my concerns, mm -hmm. as well as you know, contaminants and everything else that's going to be. That's happening. that's a that's a matter about wells that 
to be honest, we've I've I've never had um, expressed as a concern. We we have had wells drying up in some areas of the city, but those have been areas where they are heavily overused, and lots of properties were all connected to the same well. Um, with how high our water table is, you know, could there be an effect? Sure. I don't I don't have any any information on how that would affect you. So these are the concerns. Mm -hmm. we Understood. Need to be taken into consideration. And it's my understanding too that wells inside the city limits are for irrigation. There are some still yeah. primary water sources. Some properties use them as primary water sources. Primary water sources. Yeah. The Myers, which are next door to me, that's their primary source. Sure. There's a house across the street, that's their primary source. We don't we don't typically we know which properties are sewer only, obviously, for, right. for our systems, yeah. but wells are typically not a city issue. They are regulated at the state level and, and by the county. Um, so we don't typically get into wells. Questions? Anybody have any questions? Don't have any. <clears throat> Again, thank you. For All right. Any other opponent testimony? Those wish, wishing to speak in opposition to the application. Okay. Any neutral testimony? Not wishing to speak in favor or against. Just wishing to be heard. All right. Um. At this time, can I go ahead and invite our applicant back up at this time to? If he wants to rebut any any points, sure. Is there anything you'd like to answer to the questions? Um, I don't know. I don't okay. So. All right. And the chair so Parker, this, what's that? Um, just one um, note. Um, so as far as the wetlands go, there is a wetland to the east of this property, but not on this property. So the wetlands map um, and the FEMA map don't show it. Um, you can't see my map, but to the I can show you on here. This over here where it drains, there is the a west. Bit, there is a wetland to the west of it, but not on this property directly. And that's where the, the there's a creek that goes mm -hmm. through that right. Yes. Yeah. It's seasonal, isn't it? So uh, yeah. And I have a I have a layer on mine, but I also looked on the FEMA map and it shows it. It's just to the west. Um, kind of west and north, it runs um, through that property there. So, but not directly on that one. All right, so then we'll go ahead and close the public hearing for discussion amongst the Planning Commission at 7.05. I agree with a lot of things that we've had in opposition testimony. I know that there aren't any wetlands on there, according to the wetland current wetland surveys for the city, but there will be riparian issues. All that will you know from the creek. It's based on its distance. The, that creek isn't one of the riparian zones. Oh, no. the city Ames Creek, Wiley Creek, and Danny M River are all riparian okay. zones, but the other creeks are not. Does anybody else have any questions or concerns they'd like to address? Um, my my concern would be uh, depending on how many units they that they request is the the traffic. I um no, I agree. I I agree that that's already that intersection on Highway 20 and uh, Clark Mills a nasty intersection. As this goes through, if once this is whatever we do, recommending to city council to approve or deny this application, if it's chosen to be approved and it goes through the planning process, traffic studies will be part of this application for development if and when it gets to that point. We're, we're still getting used to our new code, and so we don't yeah. have it memorized. Um, and just to clarify, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, um, just to clarify. So in the staff findings, um, I just want to make sure that I'm reading it and understand correctly. The so our new zoning map 
our new comprehensive plan. This property is, the plan is to designate it as high density, but right now it's low density. So the comprehensive plan, which was last updated uh, in 2010. Right. But even that, I think uh, that, that wasn't updating the map. The, the comprehensive plan map that we have is from basically early 2000. Um, that designates it as high density residential. So okay. it, 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 as is typical when you, and I don't know what it was before then, we could research that if that's of interest. Um, but as is typical, when you have a, when you update a comprehensive plan, the, the plan gets changed, but the zoning is usually left alone because the, the thinking is to give the property owner the benefit of any benefit that the previous zone had. And then if they wish to change the zone, they can. Um, and so often we have applications like this that come before us where comprehensive plan states that that's what it should be, but it it's out of compliance. And so they're asking for it to be changed. Um, and so, yes, it's, it's, it's currently R1. Yes. Um, and the comprehensive plan says high density would be R3. Okay. And, and that's, and it states that it should be or could be. It states that it should be, that that's the plan is for it to eventually be changed. But again, it's, um, it's it, it's basically it, the only reason it wasn't changed at that time when the comprehensive plan map was changed was to give the property owner the benefit of either zone with whatever um, that property owner wished to do. It's the same circumstance that we have right now that we changed the we have the RC zone and the MUE zone. So our new comprehensive plan designation for recreation commercial is now the mixed use employment. We didn't just go and change the map. We changed the comprehensive map to MUE. So if at one point anyone in that RC zone wants to change it to the MUE zone, they have that opportunity. We don't just automatically change it. So they now have the opportunity, though, however, to do that. So. <clears throat> and I did find um, so traffic impact study. Uh, a TI required or a change or one or more of the following, a change in zoning or plan amendment designation, operational or safety concerns documented in writing by a road authority, an increase in site traffic volume generation by 300 average daily trips or more, an increase in peak hour volume of a particular movement to and from a street or highway by 20% or more, an increase in use adjacent streets by vehicles exceeding the 20,000 pound gross vehicle weight by 10 vehicles or more a day, Existing or proposed approaches or accesses connect connections that do not meet minimum spacing or site distance requirements or are located where the vehicle entering or leaving the property are restricted or such vehicles are likely to queue or hesitate at an approach or action creating a safety hazard. A change in internal traffic patterns that or a TIA required by ODOT. So it, when there's no application for building associated with this zoning change request, but when, when there is something submitted, we would look at how many units are proposed, how many units are asking for, and see if these criteria match. Um, depending on how dense it was, I could see that there's certainly a possibility that it could be an increase in site traffic volume by 300 average daily trips or more, um, uh, or any operational or safety concerns that we as the road authority the city documents. So there certainly is a good possibility that um, some kind of traffic impact analysis would be necessary. But again, that, that depends on what level of development it proposed. Right? Yeah. And in the development uh, information volunteered by the applicant, if they did do a fitness and that fitness center would be closed to the residents of the property. If it were open to the public, it would become commercial at that point. So I this is the first tonight is the first time I really heard about the fitness center being very large. So typically with a with an apartment development, usually those kinds of amenities are for the residents. I have not heard of any that have one that's open to the public, and that would probably not fit within the zone. Um, this this is not a mixed use zone, not a commercial zone, and so. Um, 
just on just on, based on what I'm hearing, we'd have to take a look at the right. proposal. But based on what I'm hearing, I don't think that that's something that would be allowed. To develop. This is the hard part for us is to separate ourselves from what could be developed here, what might be developed here, what will be developed here from the fact that what we're doing is a zone change for this property. Um, we all have strong opinions on what we think things should be and how they should be. Um, we're all parts of this community, so I just want to remind everybody that we are here looking at the zoning change and that alone and the recommendation for the zone change to go to city council. Anybody else have any points of discussion in regards to this application? If not, I would look for a motion. Quiet. <laughs> Very quiet. Okay, I I will move to recommend that we approve this and send it to the city council. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor. We'll go to Angela for a roll call. Commissioner Melcher? Yes. Commissioner Wood? Yes. Commissioner Waltheus? Oh. Commissioner Parker? Yes. Mr. Branson? No. Commissioner White? Yes. Four ayes, two nays, motion passes. Okay. I would, sir, I would encourage you to go to the city council meeting where this will be sent next from us. And again, be there. It's frustrating that I called the city. They told you one set of rules. I come here and I hear a different set of rules. As to? Very frustrating. Of what the property was intended for. You let me come yeah. here. Well, All of these things that they yeah. turned it down. So, thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. So we're going to head on to application VR twenty three oh one, and we're going to open the public hearing at seven fifteen. The applicant is seeking a variance to allow for one hard surfaced off street parking space and a 17 foot carport setback from the property line. The subject property is zoned medium density R2. The minimum lot size for the R2 zone is 5,000 square feet. Requires a six foot or 60 foot front of building width, requires a 20 foot set front setback to the garage or carport and requires two hard surf parking spaces per Sweet Home Municipal Code 17.12.060. The subject property is approximately 3,485 square feet and is a pre-existing non-conforming lot. The applicable substantive criteria are listed in the staff report. Testimony, arguments, and evidence must be directed toward the criteria described or other criteria in the plan or land use regulation which the person believes to apply to the decision. Failure to raise an issue accompanied by the statements or evidence sufficient to afford the decision maker and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issue precludes the appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals based on that issue. Do any of our planning commissioners have any personal bias in regards to this application? No. 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 I have none. No. Any conflicts of interest? No. No. None. No. I have none. Any ex parte information? No. no. I drove by it. Drove by? Drive by. Okay. I have none. So at that, we'll go ahead and 
turn it over to Angela for our staff report. As was stated, um, the applicant is seeking a variance to allow for one hard surface off street parking space and a 17 foot carport setback from the front property line. Um, based on the FEMA map, the subject property is not in a special flood hazard area. The subject property does not show wetlands or waterways on the property. Um, the subject property has access from Willow Street and has access to city sewer services. Water services are provided by an existing well. <clears throat> Development on the property is constrained. Sorry. Um, let me back up. The subject property is in the residential medium density R2 zone. The dimensional standards for the R2 zone are a minimum lot area of 5,000 square feet, a front yard setback of 15 feet, a garage or carport setback of 20 feet, and two hard surface off street parking spaces. Um, per Sweet Home Municipal Code 1712060A and 1712070A. Development on the subject property is constrained by the pre-existing non-conforming lot area of approximately 3,480 square feet. The single family dwelling is within setbacks and the applicant has proposed to align the carport with the dwelling. If the applicant were to move the carport back three feet to comply with the front garage setbacks of 20 feet, they would need a variance for the rear setback. The applicant is proposing approximately 10 foot by 17 foot hard surface approach. The typical hard surface approach allowing two off street parking spaces is approximately 20 feet by 20 feet. Willow is a 45 foot unimproved street and is part of a local improvement district, which will require street improvements and may affect traffic volume and on street parking in the future. <clears throat> the development on the subject property is constrained um, by the lot area of approximately 3,480 square feet. Minus the approximate 10 foot by 17 foot, 170 square foot proposed hard service approach, the applicant has approximately 816 square feet, um, roughly 48 by 17 feet of front yard space left. If the applicant were to comply with the two hard surface off street parking spaces, approximately 20 by 17, they would have approximately 646 square feet, roughly 38 by 17 of front yard space left. The alternative would be to allow a variance to the rear setback and move the single family dwelling and carport back three feet, allowing for a 12 by 58, which is 696 square foot backyard. This would allow for a front setback of 20 feet and allow for more off street parking and front yard space. And just to clarify there, thank you. Um, there is no house, it's a bare lot. Um, so, yeah, this is not, yeah. <clears throat> Um, Willow is a 45 foot unimproved street and is part of a local improvement district, which will require street improvements and may affect traffic volume and on street parking in the future. However, staff finds that the proposed variance will not be material, materially detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to the property in the vicinity or district in which the property is located. In the medium, residential medium density zone, there are no mi minimum building size for stick built homes and the minimum garage or carport requirement is room for one car. The site plan submitted to the building department, attachment B shows a 28 by 38, 1,064 square foot single family dwelling and an attached 10 by 28, 290 square foot carport. The overall footprint is 1,344 square feet. The applicant also shows only one hard surface approach on the site plan. Staff informed the applicant that they would need a variance for the plan that was submitted. Staff finds that with the constraints of the lot area, the variance is the minimum that would alleviate the identified hardships of the submitted site plan. All, uh, all applicable building code requirements and engineering design standards shall be met. Um, building permit application 82723-00023 DWL is pending the approval of the variance application BR23-01. The building code and engineering requirements will be reviewed prior to the issuance of the building permit. Other than the front setback to the carport and the off street parking requirements, all other zoning code has been met. Staff finds that the applicant has met the criteria listed in section three. Staff has not recommended any conditions of approval. The planning commission will hold a public hearing at which it may either approve or deny the application. If the application is denied, the action must be based on the applicable review and decision criteria. Appeal period, the staff recommends that the Planning Commission's decision on the, this matter be subject to the 12-day appeal period from the date of the decision is mailed. 
order after the planning commission makes the decision staff recommends that the planning commission direct staff to prepare an order that is signed by the chairperson of the planning commission the order shall memorialize the decision and provide the official list of conditions if any that apply to the approval if the application is approved motion after opening the public hearing and receiving testimony the planning commission's options include the following one move to approve application br 23-01 and their by permit the variance for the subject lot located at 1907 Willow Street, Sweet Home, Oregon 97386, identified on the Lynn County Assessor's Map as 13S01E29CC, tax lot 801. Adopting the findings of fact listed in section three of the staff report, the setting of a 12 day appeal period from the date of the mailing of the decision, and hereby direct staff to prepare an order to be signed by the chair to memorialize this decision. Two, move to deny application BR 23 01 and thereby deny the request for a variance for the subject lot located at 19 1907 Willow Street, Sweet Home, Oregon 97386, identified on the Lynn County Assessor's Map as 13S01E29CC, tax lot 801, adopting the findings of fact, so the setting of a 12-day appeal period from the date of the mailing of decision, and hereby direct staff to prepare an order to be signed by the chair to memorialize this decision. Three, move to continue the public hearing to a date and time certain or for other. Any questions of staff? Do anybody on the, any of the commissioners have any questions for staff? None. No. No. All right. If no. nobody has any questions for our staff, um, we'll go ahead at this time and invite our applicant up. If they wish to speak. Evening. For the record, that we have a seat. If you could see, state your name and address. Well, Brian Oaks, uh, 24051 Territorial Road, Mineral. I'm the owner of this lot and the licensed general contractor. We're doing this myself. Okay. Anybody? Oh, for the record, if you could just quickly state why you're asking for the units. If you have a small lot size, I either have the option of requesting you guys allow me a variance in the rear, much like Angel said, to allow the two hard surface parking uh, spaces in front of the house. Um, due to the likelihood that I'll need an in ground uh, water storage tank due to low well velocity that we tested at this property, I'd like to be able to bury that tank in the backyard. So, my hope is that I can move this house where it is. And using that 10 by 17 foot front parking space in conjunction with the 28 feet, uh, 28 by 10 behind it allows me 45 by 10, essentially a quarter 50 square foot of off street parking. Although it's not the 20 by 20 square up front, it's essentially how I came to this plan. I was still trying to provide uh, the future owners of this home minimum of two off street parking spots even though it's not necessarily in front of the house uh as you can see on the plan maybe on the first image uh there's no wall in front of the park there's no reason why a 20 foot vehicle would not be able to extend three feet within the front lawn lobby. i could understand if there was a garage and there was just no space with the 17 foot setback uh, but in this plan i, I can't imagine what i would limit anyone from parking minimum of two vehicles at least front to back That being said, I, I am completely agreeable to if, if it's in your guys' purview of the best interest to move the house back and put the two front party spots. That is, I'm completely in agreement with that. This is just, it is in essence, mimicking the property to the west, who also has a single paved to the lead. Um, the property map here shows two cars parked next to each other. It's not the current case. Uh, drive by tonight reveals that they're. Is the house to the west with a single, I would estimate a 60 foot uh, parking lane. So it would, it would nearly limit the property to the west. Just for clarification, <clears throat> this is the, the lot where there was a fire? Correct. The 
if for one reason or another you're opposed to adjusting the roof line to really? be back at that point of the carport. Just for build, just for the the ease of building, um, it would be a matter of all of my all of my trusses. If I move it back three feet, then I would have a, I would have my trust front mark and dog leg in, or it would have a five foot overhang, which would likely change how I would have to build my bottom cord of the truss. In order to keep the roof line the same, I would have to change the bottom cord of all the trusses. And that would be a two by four and two by four. It would just person change. So we I'm attempting to in a, in a very underdeveloped area of Sweet Home, uh, build an affordable house. This is a two bed one down to be under three hundred thousand dollars for a brand new house in Sweet Home. Um, and the idea of adding another twenty five hundred dollars of concrete in the front or another, you know. Like thirty five hundred dollars of trusses, this is cast down in the end. Does anybody else have any questions for our applicant? If there is street improvement in the future, is that carport going to be too close? I mean, it's a an improvement district, so how's that going to affect it? setback uh, well the what would change would be the front post on the street side they move three foot back but it would not change the ability of parking a vehicle you essentially still have an unobstructed 45 foot by 10 concrete treadable surface um i could see like i say if it was a garage where it had a front wall and it was 17 foot you simply can't you you simply can't park a 22 foot vehicle without it being five feet in. But in this setting with an open wall in front, it would just be those five foot under the carport with the additional 23 feet in front of that vehicle for me. So as long as nobody put in for a firm empty box in the carport and make it a garage, um, or if that became an issue, then we need to discuss, I guess, with any of you guys about. Then dog legging that front wall in three feet to maintain that 20 foot stuff out. So also though, along with the post, the beam that bears the trusses would also have to go in three feet. It will. And it just again for construction's sake, meeting it at the corner uh, of the house where all of our corner load beam. I, it would be a matter of just having a corner load beam for the house plus moving three feet and doing other beam. Um again, not completely undoable, we'll just Ease of building across the building. And not seeing that that three feet, uh, you know, as a realist, that I don't know what that that posting 17 foot from the street as opposed to 20 changes with the accessibility or parking off street. It looks to me like <clears throat> we made some revisions to the backyard. And you redesign the house if you get a possibly even a double garage. Then you could for then it would be a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar house on Wall Street. It's a two hundred and ninety nine dollar house. So the option the the other option uh, you know, simply our fans one had suggested the staff report moving the whole house back three feet and then putting the two page Parking spaces up front, plus the carport being 28 feet. Um, it's a lot of off street parking. It's a lot of concrete. So, what if you moved it back? Could you get a single garage with a parking stall that would not overlap the city property? I, I would not, I will not build a garage on this property for cost purposes. It would be this, this carport will be, this house meets the criteria currently if I simply move that one post three feet back, which would be the most cost effective of all of these options, uh, besides just moving the whole house back to three feet. The previous house, you can see the setback was 
I would estimate under five feet for the bath. And this one is 15 currently. So I would ask if if it was not approved in the current bathroom, approving the rear variance to 12 feet still notably increases the backyard size compared to what the previous still on the way. Or there are other house plans too, right? Good money. You can always redraft them. <laughs> Just pass it on. In the world of trying, you know, trying to build an affordable house, um, this is kind of what we, what I've been doing. It's worked out well. Does anybody else have any questions for our applicant? All right. Thank you so much. All right, we'll continue to go through the motions. Uh, at this time, we would invite any proponent testimony, those wishing to speak in favor of the application. Come forward. As there are none, any opponent testimony, those wishing to speak in opposition of the application. Any neutral testimony, not wishing to speak in favor or against, just wishing to be heard. As there are none, we will close the public hearing at 7.34 for discussion amongst the commission. This is one of those that I think is, I think the intentions are great. Fixing the neighborhood up, building something new, trying to revitalize the area. I get it, I understand it. But at the same time, we're also battling historically the willy-nilly handout of variances and on this home there are no geological issues on this property no unbuildable slope there's no creek there's no large obstructions it's just a blank square flat lot and small and small i agree um i think the alteration of the the post on the beam to meet setbacks that are required in code is a nominal expense um, in order to not redraft everything. I know it will change the health the look of the house ever so slightly. Um, but we do have some submitted letters from neighbors as well with uh, concerns about going forward and construction of things in this neighborhood to come. Sheriff Parker? Yes, sir. Would you like a recap of the proposed local um, of the um, local improvement district for this street? Oh, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Okay. So um, it's been it's in the financing stage right now. There was a um, petition by property owners in of this neighborhood. Um, Willow and Yucca Street to have a local improvement district that would bring water service to all the properties as well as uh, an improved street and sidewalk. There is a plan for that uh, that was approved by the City Council um, to move forward. We are currently arranging financing for that project and so we don't because of that we don't have a hard date yet for construction. However, um, it is envisioned that in the next couple of years that would be a reality that there would be an improved street and water to all the properties. Um, it would not affect the development of this property because it all of the proposed improvements in the local improvement district are within the current street right of way. And so um, the setback is um, would be the same essentially. However, there would be um, water service to available to this property so that it wouldn't have to rely on on a well if it didn't need to. Um, but that's so that's coming. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any hard dates yet, but um, it is a, an ongoing project. The one of the so that this the condition of the street was mentioned in many of the letters, mm -hmm. and that's one of the main important reasons of of considering that is that um, after that LID is completed, the the street will be able to handle as much traffic as this neighborhood will be able to throw at it. Right. Okay. 
my biggest concern with allowing just the 17 foot setback. I know it's a post. I know it's a beam. But this is a town of large trucks. Mine also 22 <laughs> feet long front to back. Um, so I understand concerns about not having the vehicles hang out to the sidewalks. And streets is important. Um, I'm not as concerned with the off street parking as much because you could do two front to back. But I don't know if this can be reworded for that or not. Or if it's going to stand the way it is for the setback for the court for it. Excuse me. Uh, I look at this and I wonder how many of these six vehicles are associated with this address, either as ownership or by visitors. And that probably is not applicable to what we're talking about tonight. Not really, no. Yeah. But it does apply to what we call off street parking. It certainly affects what we think about the project tonight. And my feelings are that, uh, you know, I, I would rather make some adjustments in the backyard and then make the front yard more compliant. I would even be willing to do one car space if it were a garage. And there must be other house plans that would fit into this, even this lot. I think the affordability is, is a very good point. Um, given the we've talked about our, our housing needs analysis and the, the affordability part of that. Um, certainly you can build anything <laughs> anywhere these days with different building te techniques. The, the main question is how much is it going to cost you? And um that's uh that's something i would hesitate to to mandate well moving moving the house back three feet meets the criteria for the the carport in front and doesn't require any changes in the house plan it's just the footprint of it on the property. It would just be changing the variance from a variance for the front setback to the variance to for the, the back. rear setback. Yes. And the current property on there is set very far back on the property as a non-conforming lot. It's a very small lot and the current house that is burned so out. It, yeah, the burned down on, house. <laughs> was right on the property line basically before. No backyard. So any backyard space would be an improvement to the house that is there. And I'm in agreement to I I would prefer the house moved back so that the parking is appropriate and conforms to our code um, and that the variance would be for the backyard setback. So if that motion were to come forward tonight, would that cause any problems with the existing application and the wording of going from the front yard to the backyard? No, because it would be the order you would make a motion to um, revise the variance to for the three feet for the rear setback instead of the three feet for the front setback. Okay. Um, you still need to address the issue of the two off street compared to the one. So. Anybody else have any points of discussion? You might want to call the applicant back and see how willing he would be to formulate that music back or anything else. I, I don't think the house plan portion is changing the house plan. It's really on the board for this portion of the application. But 
Um, we'll stick with the whether it's variance for the front or the back. If I'm not and mistaken, that mistaken I believe during his, his testimony, he said he would be open to looking either variance. Uh, the, the front or the back. Yes. Just give them an opportunity. Yep. You guys have any? Nothing more. No, I'm, would you like to have him come back up? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I, I agree that moving it back three feet. Um, that solves the issue. I, that, that solves all, it's the easiest way to solve the problem. That solves the setback issue to the carport, but it doesn't solve the second issue of two off street parking spaces. Right. I mean, you'd, you'd want to approve. If that's the direction you want to go, you'd be approving a variance for the rear setback and for the um, number of off street parking spaces. But moving the house back three feet to allow for the front setback to be correct would also allow for width widening of the driveway at that point mm. to accommodate the two off-street parking spaces. But currently on the plan um, that was submitted, there is only one off-street parking showing. So even moving it back, there would still only be one on the plan. So right. you would, would, you would need to vote whether he would need to add a second one because um, the hard surface, because it'll be a hard surface. So whether he has to hard surface one um, space or two. Okay. <clears throat> Well, I would make a motion based on what appears to be his willingness to accommodate that and move it back. I would make a motion that we approve the application with the adjustment of three feet, reducing the variance or providing a variance to the backyard and proceed as planned. Okay, do you want to address the off street parking in your motion? Well, this would accommodate then two off street parking. Yes. I'll second. So, so, just to clarify, that would be a variance for the three, feet, three foot decreased rear setback, but not a variance for off street parking or Yes, there would be a variance for us. Well, I think if I've understood things correctly, that would accommodate the two off street parking places. So we don't need a variance for that. Mm. But what is proposed is one off street parking. So that is what the variance is for. So, um, okay, so let's include two, two off street parking places in that motion. So approving the three foot, the variance for a three foot setback into the backyard going to 12 feet. But still requiring two off street parking, hard surface parking spaces. Correct. Okay, with that motion, is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We'll uh, put to Angela for a roll call vote. Commissioner Parker. I'm going to have to say no. Okay, you're going to make me tell you something. Commissioner Wolthius. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Branson. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. Commissioner Wood. Yes. Commissioner Melcher. We did lose her, so I don't know oh. if she's on. She, she did. Had, she had connection issues, so we okay. do not have her anymore. Okay. So it is, we still have a quorum, however, so it is uh, four yay votes, uh, one nay. Um, so motion passes. Great. Thank you so much. Brian, I will contact you in about all of this. All right, so at this point, we'll continue our public hearing for our housing needs analysis summary report. So we are unfortunately our consultants for housing needs analysis are not on the meeting. Um, 
we had sent notice to them and uh, a link for them to join and have not seen them. Um, the revised housing needs analysis, though, is in your packet. Um, and if you have questions, Angela and I can attempt to answer. Um, but otherwise, it's it's kind of in your court. If if you have questions about it, we can certainly continue it to another meeting and try to get the, our consultants, um, make sure that our consultants are, are represented here for you to answer their questions. However, if you don't have any questions, you are at liberty to simply um, uh, recommend adoption of it and have it move forward. But that is up to you. Well, I'm I'm at a toss on this one because efficiency wise, I want to be the closed out and right. done. But at the same time, they did do a very good job with their presentations and they did answer a lot of questions. And I would hate to put the burden on you and Angela getting halfway through this and then we get stumped. Right. Well, I will say that it, it it's pretty much the same as what you've reviewed before, mm -hmm. but there have been some modifications to it, especially with an eye for um, housing affordability and and recognizing. Um, the need to keep to take that into account when when planning for housing in the future. So um, that's the bulk of the uh, change. There were some uh, adjustments to um, some of the population numbers and the way that they that they did it. So it it's it, it was the best that they, they my my complaint about it was that it seemed like a lot of the numbers they were using were out of date already. Yeah, um, but they are res restrained by state law on which numbers they can use considering the start of their analysis and it's just kind of bad luck on our part that um, this process started before the um, the, the more more correct numbers came out and so that's what we're left with but um, those were the only actual changes made and given our amount of developable land it you know, we still have plenty um, of available land for development. It doesn't really change um, any of our ability to provide the amount of land necessary to meet our needs going forward uh, into the next 20 years. Well, I'll turn it over to my fellow commissioners. Do you guys feel that You've had your questions answered in regards to this, or you've had enough time to read through it. I want to proceed, or would you feel more comfortable if we held it off to one more meeting? No, for our newer commissioners who weren't able to be here when we actually were able to ask questions, <clears throat> it might be better. Although, to me, it looks almost exactly the same as they presented to us, but um, that that way, you know, to you know, push it off again, maybe to get some um, somebody here who can answer questions and talk to us about it. Because they, it was very important that they stopped it so that they could make these updates. So I'd really like them to come back and tell us what the updates were. Yeah. Um, well, and to and to clarify, it was it was um, DLCD that that really. Um, Put the pressure on this happening, these this change, uh, these changes, and so they did address all of DLCD's concerns, and um, and so that's that's why we're at this point where we are. Have you guys had a chance to look through it at all, or have any questions in regards to it? I've read through it, uh, tried to understand the graphs. Uh, the main thing that came out to me was the proposed projected population increase and how many new housing units would be required for that. I was shocked. That, that's, but then it's 20 years too. Right. I didn't figure you might, but <laughs> I was surprised by the whole thing again. I love the information and I appreciate that they went back and and alter the numbers to more reflect current situations of sweet home. But I was just blown away by the rent burden <laughs> that we have in, in our community. And 
you know, I think a lot of people are against low income housing, but at the same time, it's desperately something that we need. And one, this kind of helps solidify that fact in my mind. One, one thing that always surprised me that that's often in my experience in local government, not just here, but elsewhere, there's often um, uh, pushback against um, what people consider low income housing. But in a community such as ours and many others, you got to consider that a lot of the housing that would be built in that category that is, you know, duplexes or or multifamily is actually much better quality than than half of the houses that we already have. <laughs> and so it, it's true. You may think of it as low income, but it's it's a, a huge improvement in quality overall just because of advances in building techniques and, and technology. We drove through an amazing little one. Cottage Grove just this last weekend, and it was a great little tiny community. Obviously, the houses were smaller and they were closer together, but they all looked very cute. The color schemes were great, and like you're saying, how low-income housing today is not the same as it was mid to late '80s, early '90s, and it's not even really low income anymore. It, no. It's middle income, and yeah, and. The rent burden Average is for income. all who rent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and it all affects the whole the supply, right? Um, yes. Newer housing is going to um, be put pressure on owners of older housing to either lower their rent or make improvements. Yeah. Just to come in, I <clears throat> had a little time to kill today in Lebanon, and I did drive down around the veterans' home and all the new apartments around. Uh, the medical school, everything west of the hospital, and some of it is very attractive, I will have to admit. And like Nancy, uh, I, I'm shocked at the projected growth, both in Lebanon as well as Sweden, but we probably have to deal with some of these things. Well, it's funny because I look at the numbers and I think that they're under they're understated. I think they're, I think they're <laughs> and, and and that, that they're shocking. I get that, but they're they're even more shocking is that they probably should be higher numbers than what are showing. Yeah, I I think I know twenty people from my wife's um, place of employment that have moved from Eugene to here in the last year, and mm -hmm. so I feel the numbers are low, but we'll we'll see how it goes. Maybe there'll be a stall somewhere. <laughs> Well, I would make a motion that we move ahead and advance it to the city council. Okay. We need to open the hearing first. Yeah. And then move it goes through the proper. Oh, so we we had yeah we, <laughs> we opened this, right in. We had this public hearing before and it was continued. <laughs> right. So we yeah. do need to open the public hearing. I will remember what I said for the appropriate time later. Sure. Right. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and open the public hearing for uh, the housing needs analysis summary report at 7.55. Anybody have any questions in regards to this? So just as a reminder, uh, Chairman Parker, this is not only the housing needs analysis summary, but it is also the comprehensive plan update, so which is included in that. So the- Just the housing. Yeah, just the, the housing house policies, house. yeah. If you want to move it forward, what we'd be looking for is a motion to recommend um, to the city council that the um, adopt. that the change to the comprehensive plan be adopted, and the uh, as well as the housing needs analysis be adopted. Are you ready? I'm ready. Fire away. I would make a motion that we. <clears throat> Forward this to the city council, uh, meaning the housing needs analysis as well as change to the comprehensive plan to accommodate that. Okay. Have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We'll go to Angela for a roll call vote. Commissioner Wood? Yes. Commissioner Wolthius? Yes. Commissioner Parker? Yes. Commissioner Branson? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. 
I think we have still lost Commissioner Melcher, but we still have a quorum. So yep. motion passes. All right. And as we'll we'll close that one. Close that discussion and then they <laughs> I'm sure yeah. all of the audience members are probably irritated. I know. <laughs> or Angela has to type all this up. That's what we record them for the 19%. Yeah. <laughs> hey, a B roll for the Christmas party. <laughs> all right. So at this point, that concludes the public hearing portion of the planning commission for April 6th, 2023. And we'll go on to any staff updates or upcoming information that we might be in need of. So last week, um, I put out notices for upcoming zone map amendment and comprehensive plan map amendments for the city of Sweet Home, Sweet Home School District and Fire District to change to update their zoning to public facility zone. Mm -hmm. Um, I will admit I will never do that again all at one time because I had to mail out 1,642 notices. <laughs> and you get about a third of yeah, those. I got one of those. So now, I'm, like, now I'm having to process like, all the returns. Well. And, uh, <laughs> and, and the questions on the people calling and not understanding what they receive in the mail because they're not used to getting notices like that. I'm just saying, yeah. pouring in and <laughs> it's needed been, a higher attempt to answer the phone. It's been nuts. Yeah. yeah. So just so just know, you know, if you have a little cat hair in any of it, you know, my cats were sitting next to me as I'm folding all those. So, <laughs> so oh. It was a long week. <laughs> so. I feel like our, our postal service too. Did they ship all that to Salem and then back, or did they keep it? I off brought boxes to them. Yeah, I the, did it two days in a row. The so. most hilarious part is that after she was all done, Julie found the function on our copier that allows for. Trifold. Paper for trifle. Oh, for it to fold. <laughs> you hand folded them all. Yeah. Oh man. We had a volunteer that came in. Um, her name is Teresa. She was great. Blair's My daughter, daughter came in from. Blair's daughter helps. Oh, you know. Our church has a little machine. Well, we do too, but it wasn't working, and it was like folding. It was it all spreading. Out. Spreading, spreading, spreading out. Out. Yeah. But we got them done, and so <laughs> yes, it was a very very long week, but it's out, and so. Um, with the DLCD notice, so that will be coming to Planning Commission, um, and we're just taking care of all of those properties all at the same time. Um, and again, there is a little confusion because people aren't quite sure what it means. Um, and mostly what I tell them is we're just kind of cleaning up. We are actually um, matching our, our tax lots to the actual uses of the tax lots, which is a public facility zone in all of them. Um, and you, if they ask more questions, it's you know, a lot of them are residentially zoned or commercially zoned, um, like our parks are all residential zoned. Um, same thing with the school district. And any time we do a project, we have to do a conditional use application or we have to do it because it's not zoned for what we're doing it for. And so this will help alleviate some time and um, money for the other entities to be able to do that. So and this will also expedite any permits for those entities in the future. Yes. As if they were a homeowner coming in for a simple residential permit, then we just be a simpler process. It'll make things a lot easier, especially for the school district, make things yeah. a lot easier for them. Yeah. yeah, they were on board pretty much. Tim just came on. Hey, Tim, how are you? I am good. I am so sorry. There must have been a miscommunication with Scott. I I I can't get a hold of him, but I'm here. If if you haven't already gone through the PowerPoint, I'm happy to walk you guys through it. Well, they passed it and to move on to the city council, but <laughs> oh my gosh, I I'm so sorry, you guys. I I'm uh, I'm I'm in Arizona. If it you know I I've got the flag right over here, so um, you know I just as proof that I'm I'm just getting out of a meeting here. So and and if the sunburn's not you know a clear enough indicator. Anyway, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for all of your collaboration. I remember working with you guys. It was really enjoyable. So thank you. Um, if there's anything else that you need from me, I'm happy to take any questions or anything like that. Well, I appreciate all your hard work and everything you've thrown into this. Um, I know it's not such an easy task, and and we made you go back and do some edits, but thank you so much. <laughs> well, that's the sign of a good process, and I, you know, I, I really can't commend you guys enough for for how well this went. And so, um, you know, kudos to staff, kudos to you all, um, and thank you. Um, and and please 
staff don't let me uh, don't don't hesitate to let me know in, in the future if there's if you want me on for city council or anything like that. I'm happy to do it. Thanks, Tim. All right. Thank take you. care. Y'all. Thank Thanks, you. Tim. So and then um, besides those notices, the um, mobile food unit code uh, went through city council. It is now enacted. So um, I still need to come up with the applications. But I had 1600 notices to put out, so I didn't get that done last week. <laughs> <laughs> On the application, I was just curious, are we going to, before something's approved, do they have to show proof from uh, food handler? Not food handler, what is it? It's health department. Yes, health department. Um, is that part of the portion for approval? The approval? So with our transient merchant application, we did. Um, and so we I haven't gotten that far to look into how much of that transient merchant application we're going to apply um, to this uh, mobile food unit, um, because technically it is their responsibility. And right. if the um, health department comes and decides to check on them, they're the, they should have it there. Okay. Um, whether we want to continue to take on that responsibility, we haven't discussed that yet. It's an area that I'm hesitant. I'm hesitant to get into because um, there already is a robust enforcement mechanism in existence with the health department, and they have. I, I have full confidence that they will be out checking on things because they they show up to Harvest Festival and check everybody there, and that's not even a permanent installation. So, um, I'm not really worried about their enforcement and to require you know people to involve us in that it just it adds a layer of complexity to it that sure. just adds time and it's not really where we need to be sure so understood we're kind of avoiding it <laughs> <laughs> and do you have any more staff stuff because i have other stuff uh other staff updates um no just that uh we'll we we already mentioned the the code update that we're talking about and um, we're coming to terms with the code being a living document which it kind of needs to be so mm -hmm. uh, various tweaks will have to happen over time so we appreciate your your help with that and that'll um we you know in the next 45 days we'll have that in front of them because it's 35 day notices yes. So as of tonight, DLCD. you passed it tonight, so I can get it to DLCD. Well, we still have to make some edits because I have to right, actually right. submit the edit. So we'll but, probably have it into DLCD yeah. next week, and then it'll come before you. But other than that, we don't really have a lot of uh, other planning efforts to report on. No, I did want to bring up, though, I stuck on Roundtable just so I wouldn't forget. Um, Arbor Day celebration is next Saturday. These are just general things. Um, Northside hmm. Park. Um, 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, we're going to have, uh, we'll do the grand opening for the dog park. There will be a dog parkour demonstration. Yes. Yeah, someone <laughs> thought I had a spelling error on my flyer instead of saying dog park. It was like, no, it's dog parkour, it's tricks and stuff. Um, we'll be opening up the racquetball court so people couldn't take a look at it. The guys have been working really hard. They painted the restrooms, they got a sidewalk put in. They actually took an old fire hydrant and turned it into a dog watering station. And they, I mean, granted, the grass are not is not going to be nice and grown by that time because they had to put some um sprinklers in and some different things, and it's been raining nonstop. And so, um, there'll be some different vendors out there um, handing out dog treats. There'll be some free plants. And the biggest thing is our Arbor Day celebration. We'll be actually putting in some trees for Arbor Day celebration um, in the dog park to provide future shade. Um, so, it should be a good time. Um, come out where we need Wally here to tell us what the weather's going to be like yeah. in a month. Right. Um, and then um, we... And on that note, yeah, I encourage you all to come out. It'll be great. And I'm, I'm just impressed with the amenities that are at Northside. And especially given the use, the, it's really an underutilized park. Oh, um, yeah. And it, I, it's got river front. It's got bathrooms there. It's got the, the tennis courts and the racquetball courts and now a dog park. And... If you haven't been inside that racquetball court building, it's actually a really nice court. Well, you and a lot. it is a very and it's it's really uh, unfortunate that it is not used more. And so, given you know people going nuts about pickleball recently, I mean, I think racquetball is going to have a resurgence too. So uh, we went into the uh, the racquetball court to check it out for pickleball. Mm. Uh, my husband and I, and really wouldn't work 
the pickleball. No, not quite. But if you fake the tennis nets, you can. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and we've talked about the possibility of, of adding some lines to the tennis court so that it could be used for either pickleball or tennis. Yeah. And uh, that's, that wouldn't be very difficult to do. So no, it's, it's, it's not. And pickleball is a lot of fun. I've heard lots of good things about it. I love the fact that you're planting the trees at the dog park, so they're doing double duty. <laughs> well, yeah. they're actually outside the fence, aren't they? No, the, we're planting a couple inside. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's true. So that we have the, the ones outside the fence have already been planted. Oh, right. So, yes. There you go. Yeah. These are some big, nice, shady, pretty trees. Well, the fall color. Kind of more like it's in it. I saw a video somewhere about the event Saturday. I uh, don't remember where. Oh, that um, that reporter that goes around. Oh, he did Sweet a video with it. Yeah, oh, Cliff. Yeah, Cliff. I think he. I think he's the one that did a little little report on it. Yeah. Oh, They've I been doing know. a lot, and I, I think they're <laughs> they're planning a a city cleanup. You know, organizing a big service group of you mm -hmm. know, litter and stuff like that. So yeah, they're doing a lot of great stuff. Um, Rather pleased. Okay. Well, and then the other big thing that I did last week, right in the middle of this, is um, I put in the Lower Sankey Park Phase 3 grant to the Oregon Park and Recreation Department. Um, the grant will be for um, a new bandstand, um, Community Event Center. Um, we will be... Uh, we will be doing um, ADA trails that will connect lower and upper Sankey Park. Uh, we will also be doing some soft dirt trails that will connect upper and lower Sankey Park. Um, part of the ADA portion of the trails will, as it comes kind of to the center above the stage, there'll be certain landings as it goes up. So we will have benches, but the landings will also be able to use as amphitheater seating for the stage as you're going up the hill. Um, and so these are... Um, in order to qualify for the grant, there's certain parameters um, such as the accessibility and seating areas and different things you have to do. So um, we think that we put together a really good proposal, um, especially based on the first one we did. Um, and so I'm tired, but I am optimistic that um, that we did a good job and we will get through it right now in technical review, which should be done by the end of April and then we'll know if we're on the list. And then we go and we do a presentation in June to them. And then sometime in September, we find out whether we get it or not. So um, everybody cross their fingers. We will be doing a um, request for donation here very soon, just like we did with the first grant. Um, I put together the forms, which I sent to you today to yeah. kind of take a look. I know I just, <laughs> it's been a crazy couple of weeks. <laughs> so don't try to do a couple hundred thousand dollar grant and a notice at the same time. Um, but I'm pretty excited about the project. Um, I think that uh, we're going to have a really good chance. And oh, and it also includes a sidewalk on 14th Avenue that will connect the lower parking lot to the upper parking lot. So there will at least be some sidewalk um, for that section of it. So that was the other component of it. So we had something along 14th that actually you can. Well, that's long over here. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. And then yeah. lighting and sidewalk. It'll, it'll be well, a, that's, that's not ADA. The ADA is going to go. ADA, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. It's going to be steep. It'll yeah. be six miles long. <laughs> it's yeah. gonna, It's a really great project, and and um, I think we're we're feeling pretty optimistic. Um, it meets a lot of the criteria that the that the state because they have certain criteria that they score it based on, and you get if you can claim more of those things, you get a higher score. So yeah, it'll be it'll be awesome. Um. For the donation campaign, the Park and Tree Committee is heading up a donation campaign for this effort to provide a, a match to the funds. This is essentially includes a structure that is replacing the old bandstand. And so when when that bandstand was found to be uh, too damaged to repair and it was the decision was made to remove it, um, everyone talked about how important it was for that to be replaced and how important that structure was to the community and so we want to make sure that we let everybody know that this is replacing that structure we're going to do the best we can to replace it with a structure that harkens back to that history and has some architectural elements that will tie it in with that um, but i know that that was because that was so important in the community we want to give the community the opportunity to 
show how important it is to them <laughs> and and join uh, with everyone in, a, in our donation campaign to help make the reality. So tell all your friends, uh, we'll have those donation forms ready. And um, hopefully the first of next week, we're just putting it all together, making yeah. sure. Um, yeah, and last time we, it was very successful and the community came together to put the playground in and redo the plaza. And um, so we're hoping, uh, we're also for that phase two in July, we were we are going to be putting the donation memorial, um, we'll be placing the donation memorial down and we're gonna be doing kind of a park celebration in July. So we'll be sending that out to just bring everybody together that donated, including, you know, our contractors and, and just kind of say, thank you. You know, this is what we come up with and then we'll launch uh, phase three. So yeah, so all the people who want who haven't made a donation for Sankey Park before can see the monument that um, we have put to honor those who did donate for that first phase. And um, we hope that we can add some more names to it mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, but I just want to give a public thank you to Angela. Uh, she's been so busy mostly because it's my fault. And, um, you know, I told her to go ahead with these projects and they have taken up a lot of time and I'm glad that she has not, uh, you know, at least to my knowledge, expressed any anger toward me. <laughs> um, it'll probably be expressed later in some way, but. <laughs> she had the day off last week. <laughs> she, she worked like the ridiculous hours and then took one day off and it's not enough. So, uh, but anyway, she's just done a great job and, um, Brian Wade, who took Joe Gravel's, Gravel's place in our department, was a big help on that grant as well. So um, we're excited about it, excited about all this work. Excellent. And then the only other thing I was going to bring up is we are going to have new hours of operation. Oh, yeah. I wrote a note, so I wouldn't forget. Um, starting April 17th, um, the KED department, Community and Economic Development Department, department, will be open Monday through Thursday, 7 to 5.30, and we will be closed on Fridays. So we are going to some 10 hour days. Kids, yeah, kids staff are moving to four tents. So that's why it's on all my emails. So if you get an email for me, it's nice and bolded so people know. People can reach us before work. They can reach us after work. Yeah, yeah that's, that's actually really but Fridays are usually really dead for us anyway. We, we really don't get much activity on Fridays. So the early hours are really appreciated. Yeah, not waiting till nine o'clock or something. Or and it gives people a little bit of time before, you know, that 7 a.m. and then a little bit of time after 5 p.m. You know, that we, and it's like anything else. If someone calls, says, I'm on my way, we're not going to lock the door on them. Right. Because I know, I know a chairman that has done that a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I'm working all day. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. So that was the only other things I had. Um, yeah, obviously we've got a lot going on. Uh, we've also got Master Parks Plan, TSP. Um, I don't know what else do we have going on. That's enough. Okay. <laughs> we're in, we're still working on this. We we received a grant for an for some um, electric vehicle charging stations, and uh, we're working on that. That's in the negotiation phase with the contractor. Um, but if that happens, it'll be on Tenth Avenue. Um, in the right of way. Uh, 10th Avenue has already been, as part of our streetscape plan, 10th Avenue was um, designated as to be changed from two-way to one-way traffic. And um, and then there would be additional parking added in. Um, if you move it to one-way, it gives you a lot of space and we could add a lot more parking to downtown, which everybody always tells us we don't have enough parking. So here you go. But that would also allow for a couple of those spots to be electric vehicle charging stations. And that way, people who are passing through, you know, from Bend to the coast can stop, charge a vehicle, go over to A&W, go over to Safeway or to uh, um, Subway, go to the bank, um, go to Sugar Vibes, all right there in that area, hopefully capture some, uh, some customers that way so they can shop while they're charging their vehicle. That's the plan. That's I throw out a question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> My drive by with the Willow Street project tonight, a lot to the east is full of RVs. Is that the zone for RV storage? No, and that is a problem. That's one of our problem properties. 
that um, we're probably going to have to take them to court. And the other comment, and, and I'm not suggesting that we discuss it anymore tonight because we've kind of already beat it to death, but when you go down to Willow and then you take the loop around and carports are a problem. They're all full of junk. So I, on that note, um, I will add, we recently hired a new code compliance officer. His name is Blake Dawson. He just started on Monday. So far, he's crushing things. Um, really excited about him joining our team. And so um, we are ready to receive your complaints. <laughs> and <laughs> well, anything... Careful. I think we've and, all and complaints can be complaints can be anonymous. We're uh, hesitant to be the complainer, yeah, yeah. especially in public. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I'll just throw out another one for us to think about: the northwest corner of Twenty Second and Long Street. It's full of mm -hmm. You're RVs. right. And uh, the, there, there must be ten vehicles there. Yep. That one is also an issue that we've talked with them before. They're supposed to be paving their driveway because they put in a new driveway. And um, once they, they're also not supposed to be parking in their yard for yeah, and more than 48 right. hours. So the yes, those are that's on the list also for enforcement. Um, I will say, please don't hesitate to, and if you don't have the, the, if you don't know how to make a complaint, please let me know. It's on our website uh, under our department and we, we we're gonna be putting out more social media blasts and everything on how to to make a complaint, but uh, email uh, CCO code compliance officer at sweethomeor.gov. Um, just send an email. That's the easiest way to to make a, a code complaint. There's also if you go through our website, there's a way for you to make to type in a, a, a complaint, give all the details of what issue you're seeing and, and get that submitted. I get those as well as the code compliance officer. And so it really is valuable. I know people don't like to complain, but it really is valuable for people to submit those because it helps us to know what to focus on because there's no lack of problems, but there is a lack of personnel. <laughs> so, um, and some problems are easier to connect co to correct than others. Some problems, some properties are easy to deal with than others, but we we do what we can. And we're, we're excited about having Blake on board to, to get out and now he'll have a 10 hour day to fill um <laughs> monday through friday uh, through thursday so. and blair also to add, there are actually papers at front also yep. you can yeah, fill out a physical form and they are anonymous even if you yeah. come in and talk to us because i'll get the forms once in a while and people yeah. are concerned about that he does not tell anybody who who right. filed and, the and, we'll, and we actually and there actually is a provision under state law that you can shield those complaints from public records requests we can have them redacted so um, that's good too. Well, all of mine got taken care of. And I'm very glad on that one. Oh, I am too. I'm looking forward to work being done on that house. But, I asked uh, the real estate agent today. She said uh, they're supposed to be out any day. Okay, good to know. So completely unrelated to all of these, the giant gravel parking lot going in next to Cedar Shack is a a thing or there's something so there's a new owner and our yeah. <clears throat> we don't have anything submitted yet but i guess i could say rumor has it that there will be more parking added will be paved um and so i i don't think it'll stay gravel. i think it's really didn't get cut or anything they just Grab a long grab. I, I don't know the specifics of so initially from the meeting that we had initially the parts that were um previously gravel will get paved the new portion of it may stay gravel temporarily for a while um but the old portions around the building itself they plan to pave right away um the the purpose of what they're doing is to allow more room for rv parking and people with boats and kind of coming in off the lake so they're just extending they're it out on reopen. yeah It'll be a restaurant. Just curious. I just saw it the other day. I was like, oh, they're expanding, right? Was, yeah, was they are. We're waiting for the official plans. We haven't gotten, we've had some pre-application meetings with them, but we haven't received the plans yet. So will be that's the rumor I heard was a pub and grub. And that, that may be true. We haven't. Just. 
we haven't received anything specific and actually and, and in building plans it won't tell us what kind of restaurant it is but right, right. um we've been told that it'll be an expansion of the building all right does anybody have any other points of discussion if not we'll go ahead and close the planning commission meeting for april 6 2023 at 8 28. Thank you all. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks. That's the longest. Thanks, meeting, that's the longest <laughs> meeting we've had since we uh, finished our the code. Yeah. <laughs> the code meeting. Good yeah. job, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. It's good to see you virtually. Thank good you, everybody, night. for the get well card. <laughs>